Hey everybody, it's me Rodney. Hey guys, it's me Missy with Rusty Relics. There we go. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> yeah. Um, and today we're going to be using those floral napkins that I used on um, those scent bags. And um, I'm super excited about it because I have a bookshelf because you know I've been working through um, all of our stash, our furniture stash that we have. And um, this is one of the pieces that was easy for me to get to. Um, so yesterday I sanded it down, cleaned it up really good. And um, I, did, I did do one thing that I won't do on this lab and that is I went ahead and pre modge podged the back of this bookshelf so that way we could do the iron on technique. And you know, when you do the iron on technique, you need your Mod Podge to be dry. So I went ahead and did that this morning and then it's just, so it's just completely dry because I want this to have um, the least amount of wrinkles as possible. And I feel like the iron on technique is the best method for that. Yeah, I think so too. All right, yeah. so our camera's gonna be in a weird position today. Uh, we're gonna probably as you, have as to, you can tell, it's, yeah. it, and we're gonna have to move it once at least. Yeah, because I'm doing the back of the bookshelf and each shelf, so I'm just gonna. We're trying to figure out the best way to like show you how to do this because it is napkins and it is furniture. It's not small, so um, if you, and I just think that it's gonna look really good. Like I had already laid it all on the back of it to see and stuff like that. I think it was really pretty, but for me, like I want to have the least amount of wrinkles and. This is the best method that I know to do that, um, but I do want to show y'all, you know, the best way to do it. So that way, if you have a piece of furniture and you have these napkins or other napkins, um, that not to be scared that you can apply them on there. So All right. we're going to learn together. And let's tell everybody, hey, that said hey so Go far. Ahead. Go Lorna ahead. said good morning from Fresno, California. She's got a member's badge, by the way. <laughs> Margie said hi. Tina said, good morning, all. Good morning. Karen said, hey. Sandy said, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Kat said, hey, Missy, we're twinning. Are we wearing the same shirt, Kat? I thought about that this morning. I was like, I put it on and I was like, it just crossed my brain. Like I was, I put it on and I was like, I wonder if Kat, I think Kat has the shirt. I wonder if she'll, <laughs> and we are twinning and we didn't even see each other this morning. She said, yes, we are. Yes. Margie said hi. Hi. Kathy said hi and gave a heart at Hansies. Good morning. Uh, Ma uh, Lisa said hello. And Tina said, uh, by chance, do you have a kitchen hutch for sale in the store? That's so funny because we were just naming off all the furniture that I have. <laughs> yeah, that's in the back that, yeah. that we're going to um, redo. But like a hutch, like, like what, what kind of like, what are you thinking? Because there's, I kind of think of different things when I think of a kitchen hutch. Like I think of that thing that I just said that I was wanting to do. And then um, I know. That's more of a curio hutch. Um, the one that I have in the back is like the, it's got the doors up top. And then it's a two piece thing. It's really big actually. Um, the body of the bottom piece of this um, cabinet would be almost like a buffet. And then you have the top piece that you can put the china in and stuff like that. Yeah, because usually well, that would be a buffet and hutch. I think, yeah. So I have that piece. But then like um, uh, D38 has one of those. Um, yeah, she's talking about a hutch like, what was that noise? It was my iron. Okay. She's talking about a, a hutch like the one in the back the, that's got the cabinet on the bottom and the hutch on the top. The hutch on the top. And then yeah. B20, or D38 also has like, um, a, it's an antique one with the enamel top and the hutch top it's not it's not a hoosier cabinet i don't think or if it is a hoosier cabinet it's a modified hoosier cabinet maybe where it didn't have all the stuff like how may has all the stuff this one i don't think had all the stuff but i also didn't deeply look in it i just know that i saw it and i thought it was pretty yeah um yeah I th and that's what like lisa said that's what she considers a china hutch you know, I'm trying to, one, yeah. It's got the cabinets on the bottom. They can either yeah. be clear doors or, or not. Yeah, because the one that I have is a two piece. Like almost like if I didn't want the top to be on it, I could use the bottom piece as a buffet. Yeah. But then the, you could put the top piece on it, which I was wanting to redo that one. Karen said a Hoosier cabinet's on her bucket list. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. 
I do love a Hoosier cabinet. I do love a Hoosier cabinet. They do come into the store. Tina said, can you send her a picture of one um, later on? No rush, yeah. she said. It might, you know what, Tina, it might be easier if, you, if we meet at the store at the same time and we show it to you in the back of the store because it's not sitting on top of each other. And um, That one's really pretty, actually. That was, one's oak. Yeah, I had to, yeah. Like, I was going to paint it. But, I mean, it doesn't have to be painted. I know Tina likes original finish. Like, I yeah. know she likes furniture like that. So, um, it, it honestly, Tina, it might be easier if we just meet up at the store one day and I just show it to you. I take you to the back of the store and just show it to you. Because, like I said, it's sitting. It's not sitting together and I've kind of got it sitting. Because, like, I tried to be organized. I'm doing quotation marks on all that. And, and put my furniture in a way that I can... Um, just work one piece out at a time like that. But I kind of get lost in that method. Tina said that sounds good. Just let her know when. Yeah, yeah. We'll do and that. And then Lisa said, I've never heard of a Hoosier hutch. A Hoosier <laughs> It's not. Somebody modified the one she's talking about. I, think I it believe is it's modified. a modified cabinet. I think it is a modified cabinet. But it's that's kind of what it, uh, because the whole top part is um, not the Hoosier part. Right. But the bottom part is, it's like, I really have to look at it better. I kind of, I look at stuff and then I don't look at stuff. Because in our head, we know exactly what a Hoosier cabinet is. We have one sitting in the back. I, yeah, there's one in the back of the store. But um, y'all, you'll never guess. You'll never be able to guess who bought it, and it wasn't us. Well, they might have because I kind of just said it. Oh, did you say yeah, it? Yeah, I said name. Oh, I didn't know you said it. Golly, <laughs> I did say. You didn't leave any surprise. I left my parchment paper over there. Kathy Let said I have it. a Hoosier cabinet. Ooh, it's got a metal sliding countertop. And a flower bin. See, that's that's the. Does it mm -hmm. still have the original flower? I mean, the. Uh, well, I guess it does if it's got the flower mm -hmm. bin with a built-in sifter. It's got the flower bin. It's got the original one. Yeah, it's the, it's going to be original for sure. Yeah. The, I think I think Hoosier cabinets are cool. I love them. They are expensive. Yeah, I do love them. Okay, so I'm going to start on this shelf. Okay. Is that where? Yeah. You've got fine. me lined up really good. I got you lined up. Okay, so like I said. Um, I sanded this cabinet down and I cleaned it up really good with white lightning and just made sure that it was um, ready to go. So I, what I've decided to do on this cabinet, and it, I mean, you could probably go either which way, but for this live, I'm going to go do, I'm going to do it this way. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and decoupage these napkins to this backboard. Um, and I already have a thin layer of Mod Podge on this backboard and it's dry. So we should be able to lay each napkin down and iron it on and have the least amount of wrinkles as possible. So what you'll need is your napkins, an iron, Mod Podge, and parchment paper. So once your Mod Podge is dry, then you'll want to... We're just going to work napkin at a time because I'm going to try to keep this as straight as possible and lucky for me the two top shelves the napkins are actually too big <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is get my napkin into position I'm gonna put my parchment paper down on it and I'm going to iron it down and then in the end I'll come back through and trim it up um, and then what we'll do is we'll paint it and for this piece um, I did go with silk again, or I'm going to paint it with silk again because um, that saves me the step of having to seal up the chalk paint and do any kind of sanding um, to get rid of the chalky feel so that way it feels nice and smooth. But either which way would work, but because I'm doing the shelves and stuff, I feel like um, silk would be my best bet. So we'll just work through shelf through shelf. And I'll try to at least get one coat of paint on this so I can show you this silk color that's really pretty. And I think it'll look really good with these napkins. And then we'll go from there. Kathy's got a really nice Hoosier cabinet. Does she? Hers has a spice rack in the top door. And it's got a, gl a small glass window at the top, too. Oh, she's fancy. I've never, I, I haven't seen one like that. She's Fancy. We saw a really old, a really really old one, right? Well, we actually sold it because it was falling apart. Remember that one? Yeah, it was really old. Like it would have costed me quite a bit of money to restore yeah. it. And the the 
if you get somebody that can make the enamel top for them, they are expensive. I think the enamel top, when I got a quote for one, it was like $225 to have it stamped to the size we wanted. Okay, so first thing I want to do is get in a position where I'm not awkward. <laughs> I, I think that's impossible when you're leaning over something. It is, it is, but it's okay. It's pretty much the only way to do that on that, though. Yeah, I've just got it laying down. Oh, you know what? You know who had one? Because Kathy said it belonged to her husband's grandmother. That reminds me. What in March, Grandma's, didn't it have a... Uh... I don't... It didn't have a glass door. It didn't have a glass door. But it did, it when did. you opened up the one door, I think it did have the things where you could have the spices in it. I can't remember. It was really pretty. So, remember that your napkin is super thin. And obviously, um, this one is already done. But let me just show you, just in case somebody on here is new or didn't watch the other live. This napkin is a two-ply napkin. So, you're going to want to separate. Is which I already have a stack over here separated. Um, but you're going to want to... Find the, the, the second ply of the napkin, and then you're just going to want to gently pull it apart. And you're going to want to save this for another day. Give it to your kids to use. And then there is your one ply napkin. It's just really delicate. So I'm just going to set this over here in my Margie pile. said that's so pretty. I think it's going to be really pretty. So, okay. The thing is, is just getting it lined up. And I gotta, I'm trying to remind myself that this bookshelf's laying down. This is the top, that's the bottom. So what I kind of looking for in this, um, in these napkins is the way the roses go, because to me they stand out the most. Um, and so I want them to be up instead of, um, like the wrong way. Margie said that's so pretty. Karen said this is going to be gorgeous. I think so too. Good morning, Judy. How are you doing today? If we can just make sure that we get everything lined up. Like my brain wants to tape it down, but I can't tape it down. <laughs> yeah, this this one to me looks like it would be the hardest part. Right yeah, here. this to me is the hardest part. And like I can measure and cut the napkin. But the only if it's square. Only if it's square. And, and I didn't I didn't build the shelf, so we don't know if it's square or not. I think hey, the Donna. shelf is handmade. It is. It's made from poplar. So I'm just gonna I'm working with somebody else's building. And it's older too. So there's no telling. Right. Okay, so I think I have so what I'm gonna do is just focus on this end because it looks like I have it all the way lined up to the edge. Oh, I'm getting nervous about it. Don't and be then nervous. I have my little iron and I have it turned on to the hottest setting. And I'm, you just want to remember not to go past the napkin because you don't want to glue your parchment paper to your uh, background. And we're just going to lightly get this going and then I can move the parchment paper as needed. And at first I thought, oh, I have to iron all of these napkins, but I don't because of the way that I'm doing it. Um, the iron is just going to take that crease out, so I'm not really worried about it. Like I said, just pay attention to your edges. When you come through and put your second napkin down, you can butt it up to that seam, and then you can go over that seam. You can overlap it and go over that seam, so don't stress about getting too close. Just work. We couldn't find any wallpaper in this in this pattern that so she decided that she she just wanted to use the napkins. That's why we're not using the 
to stick on wallpaper or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, because I mean, that would be easier, obviously. But I really like these napkins. And I already have them. So why not use them? <laughs> That's a good test to see if we can pull this off. <laughs> so, yeah. So far, so good it's looking to me. And she's got a really nice paint that she's going to go over it with, too, to make it look even better. Right. So, yeah, let me, I can see where it's a little bit. That's why I like this iron, because it gets, like, in these corners. Like a detail sander, mm -hmm. almost. So now I just need to get just moving my parchment paper to go where I need it to go. That way you don't get any Mod Podge on the iron? Yes. So I'm just working it in the crease right here and then we'll be able to come through and um remove that excess off right there. So then I'm just going to take my next napkin. And another reason why I went with these napkins is because they're like tileable, I would say, because you can match them up pretty close to each other. And I think that if you don't get it quite lined up, I think it's going to be okay. I don't think it's going to be that noticeable because it is a little bit different but not so much. So the biggest key is going to be lining up your edges perfectly. And the, because of a napkin being so thin, you're not really going to see if it's a little bit overlaid. Because they're really thin. It's thinner than decoupage paper. Much thinner than decoupage paper. So once I get it lined up, let me go up. Marge, you said that's such a great idea, but I'd be afraid to try it. We were actually uh, the more I kept almost on changing at it. our mind this morning. Yeah, the more like I kept 30 on... minutes before we uh, started. The more I kept on looking at it, I was like, ah, do I really want to do this on a live? But I was like, I'm already, you know, it's okay. If I mess up, then I'll be like, hey, guys, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> This is a lot of what not to do. So no big deal. All right. So I think the, to keep it from moving, because every time I pick up my hand, it's going to keep on moving. Yeah. Because it's just a napkin. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is get it where I want it to be. Maybe a smaller piece of wax paper. So you can just glue one spot, basically? Yeah. And I'm going to focus on right here at the top and getting the seams right here matched up. Lisa said, I have faith in you, Missy. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And get that down. Cat said, slay. Slay. And then keep... Holy cow, you did it. Yeah, keep moving. My she said, period, Pookie. <laughs> I believe that would be <laughs> Emily that said that. It says cat. It says cat, but it sounds like Emily. It does. Just a little bit. There we go. And then lay it down. Keep keeping the pressure. And get the seams iron. Margie said you can do anything. Oh, y'all have a lot of faith in me. I don't know. <laughs> it's coming around though. All right, and then now we'll just um. I, you nailed it. I can't believe it. I That's believe so it. awesome. 
I was actually worried there for a second, too. Just let me lift this paper up right here and lift this up because my iron is on it. So I had to zoom in on that one. So there we go. Okay, let me get this iron going. Also, you know, one thing is not to stress about it because it's the background of the bookshelf. And by the time you put something on it, it's going to, you're, you're not really going to see so much of the flaws that, you know, that could come with um, doing something like doing this. Doing something like this, decoupaging it on there. Lisa said, I'm so glad May May sent me over to your channel. I just love y'all. Oh, you're so sweet. Karen said, me too. Ah, oh, y'all are super sweet. Super sweet. Donna said, from way up here in Missouri, it looks like it's matched up perfectly. Yeah, I had to zoom in and, and check it out. In? And I, I was, I, I'm stunned. I would not have been able to do that. Lining up a stencil is one thing. Yeah, it is. Lining some, something like that up, that's a total different monster. Do you do I have painters tape up there? No. Okay, let me grab some painters tape real real quick. It's crazy too because, because I had some in my container. I had it um I actually had it yesterday. But I might have here it is. I did. I put it back up. Yeah, I try to keep it in my container here so I can I keep was, you within in the boundaries when you're doing on the cabinet. I was responsible and put it up. So what I'm wanting to do is kind of just tape this, not nothing crazy. Taping keep it out it, of the way. Keep it up so that way it's not in my way. Um, Lisa said, wow, that's perfect. Doesn't it look really good? I, at first, and I was wondering, I was nervous yesterday because I had staged it up like this, like I put all the napkins in there. Just number one, just to make sure I had enough napkins to um, do this with. And then, so I sent a picture of it to like Emily and I was like, does it look too busy? But I don't, I think that once you, you'll balance it out with like a few decorations, books and that kind of stuff, it's not going to look too busy, but. I it like it. It's pretty good. It's reminiscent of really old school wallpaper. I, yes, it does have vintage vibes, is which the color that I'm wanting to paint it is um, called Sandcastle by Silk. And it has um, a little bit of the vintage vibes too. So here's going to be the biggest thing right here. So what I want to do here is get it lined up the best that I possibly can because it is just a small section. And what I'm going to do is use my finger. I'm going to give myself a little bit of grace and uh, room to go over. because I can always come back through and trim up. It's much harder to add. That is true. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is just use my finger and kind of try to make a crease here. Because it's a napkin, it's easy to fold and, and crease up. And then I'm gonna take that line and my scissors and I'm just going to cut. And I'm actually gonna cut on the outside of the line because I just wanna make sure that I'm giving myself enough room. Kathy said, tricky for the corners. Yeah, the corners are gonna be a trick. And then we'll save that one because I probably can use it again down here and up here. And match it back up. And another thing about the shelf is which uh, the perks to it being handmade is that it's actually got um you can actually slide the paper up a little bit underneath this shelf. Um so that's pretty cool too. I 
I think that's about the best I can line it up. It's not perfect. It's, it's, I mean, if you're right here and you have your face in it, it's really not perfect. But it's good enough. Like, honestly, I don't think you're going to see um, that it's not perfectly camera. lined up. So, okay, same trick. Where'd my parchment paper go? Right here. So what I'm going to do is just start out. right here at the top and put a little bit of iron on it just to get it glued down jay said hey guys popping in to like the video and say hi got a school honor roll functions to attend for jay lee y'all have a blessed day you too jay you too jay thank you and then lisa said it looks great it is Margie good. said it looks perfect to her. All right, now I just should be able to just iron the rest of this on like that. Judy said it looks great from here too. It looks great to me as well. Just make sure that you don't iron down this extra paper. Which I'm sure if you have the perfect, you know, um, built shelf, everything's like measured correctly, you could definitely cut it. Definitely. Yeah, because then you could just throw it on that, mm -hmm. that thing like we got. Yeah, and just cut it straight. A 36 inch paper cutter. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Karen said, looks amazing. I think that that's really pretty. Yeah, yeah. it's lining up just fine. How do I work this thing again? There we go. I'm going to see if I can trim up this extra excess right here. Molly said, that's beautiful. Thank you, thank you. The thing about tissue paper is it, is, or this is a napkin, is it is delicate. Do you have your X-Acto knife? It might be better for that. My X-Acto knife needs a new blade. Oh. So if you're tearing it, like you're just... Basically, you're punching holes in it as you go. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm just finding the, the shelf that this is laid up with and then what we'll do because it's because you want to avoid tearing it guys that's you why do, it's just taking our time and this is i mean it's it's a napkin and this is not um this is the iron on method so it's not exactly it's gonna it has okay so i'm gonna be honest it's tearing just a little bit but I'm just being very careful. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the iron and go back over it and glue it down. And then in towards the, when it's all said and done, I could always come back through with a clear coat and just make sure that all my edges are um, all glued down. So this so, looks like the hardest part. This is probably the hardest part for sure, yeah. Because, yeah, it tears. You want me to change that blade and put it to, uh, in my bags at the store? Yeah. I can probably flip that one around for you if you want me to. Um, I think I can... Let me see if it just needs to be a little bit sharper. 
We do not have a rotary cutter, Tina. But yeah, a rotary cutter would most definitely work better. The only rotary cutter we have is actually on that big 36 inch cutter. And it's just part of the moving head, which is self sharpening too, which is really cool. The water brush method for trimming the edges would make them fray. I had that, so I thought about that too. Like that was the first thing I thought yeah, about. Yeah, because that's what Donna just asked. I, you know, it's actually, I'm, I probably am going to try it and just see. Because it can't be no worse than, um, than the razor blade, honestly. I'm trying to just get this big portion out of here. So like right there is which is hard for the razor blade to even get to anyway. So what I'm gonna do is just lay this down. What if you used a straight edge up against it when you went to cut? Like to hold it down? Looks good to me. It's not. It's not anything. Um, let me find the smallest paintbrush that I have. This would be the smallest one. Let me get a cup of water. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with it. No, it's just like if you're like I said, if your head is deep into it. Right? You can see a little bit of the tearing. Yeah, you can. Just a little bit. Nothing crazy. I mean, honestly, if somebody is that deep into your um, bookshelf, then they shouldn't be there. <laughs> so I'm going to use this um, like that. You know what? That might be the easiest thing yeah, ever. Yeah, because you're just knifing it up after it's I wet. Am. So I can put this right there at the... Which I was thinking you could do that with a razor blade, too. Karen said if somebody's got a head in their cabinet, kick them to the curb. That, thank you. That's I was trying to think of the nicest way to say that. If somebody's got their head in your bookshelf um, from where you just did something, uh, yeah, they don't need to be in your house. Lorna. This actually is the easiest way. Lorna said that's so pretty. Lisa said that's a smart technique that you're doing right there. Yeah. I was so worried that the water would, um, because it's Mod Podge, so it's water based. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm going to do is just keep this here, and I'm just going to rip it and hopefully get a clean cut, a clean tear. So the trick with doing that would be to hold the knife all the way, like hard up against it. Hard up against it. And then you can just kind of, because it's a napkin, so you can kind of just scrape it. It almost like cuts it for you. Oh, there we go. Get a little bit more water. Uh, Lisa said that's a smart technique. Margie did uh, uh, laughing faces about the kick them to the curb comment. Kick them to the curb. No Donna joke. said yes. Oof. Oh, I'm trying to stick my scraper into the. <laughs> into the water okay let's see what do i have here the hardest parts are going to be your corners honestly but tina said that works perfectly it really does i was just the, the main reason why i was nervous behind it because it's a napkin 
number one. So it's a lot thinner than decoupage paper. Number two, it's Mod Podge, and it's that's water-based. And so I don't want to reactivate my Mod Podge so much, if that makes sense. So that was my biggest, you know, like thinking behind the water part. Well, Donna got you to thinking, and she then did. it worked. Good job, Donna. That's cool. I learned something new every time I watch y'all, Lisa said. Lorna said, you're a natural problem solver with other people's help. Yes, other people's help. It's actually really easy after you wet it to just hold your scraper there. And then I don't know if you can see, but I'm just using my fingernail. And I'm just going along the edge of the scraper and I'm just scraping the napkin up. It's actually easier. And then I pull it off like that. Look at that. Perfectly cut. Perfect. So let me use my finger right here on this piece. Then you should be able to put, push real hard with your scraper and just lift up. I'm actually just making sure that... No, oh, you're tucking it. Yeah, I'm almost I tucking it. Yeah. I'm tucking it where I can. Okay, guys, so it's not perfect. It's not perfect at all, but it is actually really good. Like, I'm not mad about it. Well, it's looking good to me. Yeah. It's just like we said, if somebody is this deep into your bookshelf, they need to go. Like that. So last, last, you know, go around. I am just going to make sure that I have it ironed on really, really good. Now, I kept on going back and forth in my head on this piece. Like, do I want to go over this napkin with Mod Podge or a clear coat or anything like that? Um, because, you know, it's like seal it up, seal it up, seal it up. But for this piece being a bookshelf, I really don't feel like it's necessary. This napkin is so thin that when you go through and iron it on, I mean, it almost just feels like, it feels no. like nothing. It's like it feels the Mod like, Podge comes yeah, through it. Like it almost comes through it. So as long as you heat it up enough, um, I think that you should be fine. Um, there are a few pieces, like when this is all said and done, um, I think what I'll take is flat clear coat and I'll just take a, th a thin coat of, with a paintbrush and just go around my edges especially on the bottom. I'm not really worried about the top because I didn't cut it, but the bottom where I tore it apart, I would just right. want to go through with a clear coat and just put a little bit there um, because it is hard for and my And with iron. the flat, you'll never notice it because it's actually it's totally flat. flat. With um, It's hard to get your iron right there in that tight corner. Margie said that's so, kind of an awkward position to get into. Yeah, yeah. It's not... Um, just wait till the top shelf. <laughs> that this one I think might be a little bit easier. Number one, because it's right here next to me. <laughs> um, do you need to move this? Yeah, I just need to move it just a tad bit. I'm gonna have to move where I'm at too, because I don't have any. I don't have any space. Um, so I am gonna go ahead and tape this up because the top shelf is even thinner. And I might be able to get everything matched up. Hopefully nobody got dizzy from that. So I'm going to go ahead and get this piece taped up. And the thing about a bookshelf too to keep in mind is 
the further down you get, the less you can see as far as like, unless you're sitting dead on the floor and, um, you know, looking at it, you don't really see it because actually my bottom shelf is big and it's bigger than this napkin. So I'm going to have like a one inch section. But I personally think that if I paint that one in Judy one says inch, she's got to run. Have a wonderful, blessed day. You too, Judy. I think that if I um, paint that one in one inch section instead of trying to decoupage a one inch section of this napkin there, I think is actually going to work. There we go. So it looks like um, this way. Tina said, if I sat on the floor, I'd need someone to help me get up. Well, I might need somebody to help me get up <laughs> after today. Because I'm not moving like I normally do. Like for the desk, it was Lauren different. said that would look good in the cottage color. Oh, it would. It would. Let me get that taped up. What she tried to do was match the background color of the uh, paper. That's why she saw, uh, chose that sand castle as the main color. Yeah, and then I was just wanting to... Um, stay neutral. Trying to stay neutral because, you know, for my purposes, it's all about, you know... Donna, if somebody else had painted it white previously with some enamel paint, so it was really easy for Missy to sand it and oh, get it yeah. scuffed up. I thought we were I, worried that it was latex. Yeah, I was worried. I was like, this is gonna be hard to sand off. But once I took, I started out with actually sixty because it had paint runs in it. I didn't even know um, we had any sixty. Yeah, or was it, it might have been eighty? Now that you say that, it, it very well could have been eighty. I started out with that to get the runs out. Um, Kathy says she was thinking it would look pretty in a green color. Green. You know I would love to paint it green. But I don't want to burn everybody out on green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Green's your new, your new old favorite color. Yeah. I love green. We don't have any green in stock right now. And our order got canceled, so it'll be next week before it gets shipped. Okay. I wish that was odd, I thought. Yeah. It was. Sandy agreed. She thinks it would look good in green as well. Yeah. So let me make sure I got it lined up here and we'll go through and... Margie says she loves green. Me too. I actually have both of these lined up and I went ahead and just taped them. So I actually think that I'm going to be able to just... Get her done. Yeah, iron it like that. Now, do do you move quick with the iron, or do you move slow? What I mean, are you trying to avoid any kind of wrinkles um, or anything? You just iron. It's like just ironing. I. I'm just asking. Yeah. Um, I mean, I see. Your, to me, it looks like you're moving quick. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to leave it there and burn it. Lisa loves mint green. Yeah. Mint julep. Mint julep. I think mint julep is the best color in the whole Dixie Bell catalog, personally. Missy would probably think it's kudzu. I do love kudzu, but I also love weeping willow. Those are new colors. They don't count. They do count. Oop. Yeah, taping it actually is um, very helpful. Tina likes emerald green. Emerald, emerald green. I like dark greens. I like moody greens too. Didn't the silk have a new green color that came out? Um, well, that uh, color that I just painted was uh, one of their new silk colors. I hadn't put those online yet. I totally forgot about that. That one, the desk or whatever. Yeah. That was a new. That's a new silk color. This is, the one that I'm using today is not a new color, um, right? It's been out for a hot minute, hasn't it? All right. Yeah. Sandcastle? Yeah. Yeah, it's been out since the beginning. Yeah. Karen said, uh, I mean, Donna asked, what is the color of the flower? 
You got a blue one, which we don't, I, that would be dusty blue, I believe would be the Dixie Bell equivalent. There's yellow, the sunflower, that would be daisy, not daisy, Colonel Mustard. Close to Colonel Mustard. And then there's a pinkish colored one, that would be like tea rose this almost. This would be almost like tea rose, maybe. Um, maybe cottage door. Maybe a little bit of cottage door like that. The pink in that is really close to cottage door, but that's almost like tea rose, it seems like. Yeah, the rose would either be tea rose or college, uh, cottage door. Let me see. This is the one that I cut earlier. Karen so. said, I love green too, but I really like sage green. Sage green. Our dried see. sage is a unusual. It's like a tannish greenish color. Okay, so I can't towel that one up because it doesn't. Um, where I cut it at, it's not quite. Right. So. Fresh piece. Fresh piece. That's why it's always good to have an extra piece on hand. So what I'm going to do is do the same thing. I'm going to make my line. Yeah, I think tea rose would have been a good color to go with as well. Well, first it would help if I put my paper in the right direction. Get it in there. I'm just going to give myself a little bit of... Donna says she likes sage green too. Yeah. Where am I at? Right here. You confusing yourself? No. Oh, I just now realized my big head's in the way. Let me move my big head over here. There we go. There go. <laughs> no, now I'm in the way of everybody's chat. All right, let's go up here. Well, we can't see it. I'm going to so just good. cut. I didn't make my line as sharp as I needed to, but it's okay. Karen Vaughn said, hi, glad I caught you. Any green is perfect for me. Ooh, yeah. Lauren oh, said you could put sad. this in a little girl's room. Oh, wouldn't this be cute in a little girl's room? Lisa, we have a website. I'll uh, give you. I'll link it in the right here in the chat in just a second. This would definitely be cute in a little girl's room. Let me see what I can do because it's a little bit off. And it could just be the napkin, or it could just be me. There we go. Got it in. Cute corgi emoji coming in. There we go. <laughs> Missy, that dresser you finished from Tuesday is stunning, said May May. Uh, isn't it? Hello, May May. How are you doing today? Oh, I love face. it. Let me get... Um, Karen said you could put it in a big girl's room, too. I put it in my room. <laughs> yeah. Emily would like it. It's a bookshelf. Yeah. Emily loves her books. There we go. She's working on her books for her booth today. Mamay says she's good. How are you? I'm doing good. Missy? Yep, good. Missy's good. She's concentrating. I keep distracting her. Just trying to make sure. There we go. Margie said that dresser is gorgeous. It is. It's really pretty. Um, I'm going to try to take it to the store. Yeah, it would have. We would have. Made, we would have made a video of us finishing it. I the problem was I didn't remove the the cover off the camera lens. And I just work and like on that for the rest of it is I just worked on it at, at, at sections at times. So like it's odd times. Like, um, you know, put your second coat on, then walk away from it again. Um, and then I just randomly just washed all the handles. And oh my gosh, them handles! Let me tell you. I just put them in the sink with hot water and Dawn, and I just was letting them soak. And then um, I, had, I put on gloves, and I have, um, I don't know if anybody's used this before, but it's called Bar's Keeper, right? Bar it's Keepers. Bar Keepers. Um, bar Keepers Friend. Yeah, it's this powdered stuff, and I don't know what it is, honestly, um, but it works amazing in cleaning up my sink and that kind of stuff. And it cleans up brass, and I think it cleans up stainless steel. I'm not 100% sure. But um, I sprinkled it on to the um, to the uh, 
handles and I took a toothbrush and I scrubbed it and when I saw that brass shine through, oh my goodness. So yeah, those were the natural handles. Those were nat the natural You know, handles. I thought they were gonna be oil rubbed bronze, but it turned out not to be the case. Oh, they are so, they were so pretty. And when I took that, um, the first one that I cleaned up and I went and put it on the drawer, I was like, yup. Kathy says I use bar keeps in my stainless kitchen sink. Okay, so then she knows what it is. That stuff is amazing. And we use it to clean out our stainless steel pots. Yeah, I clean it on When they my get that, uh residue on the bottom. I use it for everything. <coughs> Excuse me guys, I'm sorry. I use yes, it for napkins. everything. Yes, napkins, that's what we're using. These, Today we're using napkins. Uh, fancy dancy, or fancy schmancy napkins. Napkins, yeah, we're just decoupaging napkins onto this bookcase. So we're just gonna do the same thing. Mamey said, oh, you're using napkins? What a shame. I have some new peach buffalo check napkins you could have used. Oh, my gosh. That would look cute, actually. It actually would be really cute. <laughs> that would be really Molly cute. Molly said, bon ami. Bon ami works the same as barkeeper's friend. I've never heard of that. Um, I know that um, for me... Um, they make liquid barkeeper and I don't like it. I like the powdered stuff, but it will tear your hands up or it does mine. So I always have to put on gloves when I use yeah, that. I'm pretty sure it's got bleach in it like Comet does. I, I'm not quite sure, but that stuff is amazing. Man, I said, we all know that you love Buffalo Check. I, I love Buffalo Check. I mean, I don't even know how anybody lives their life without Buffalo Check. You bought those napkins, those, those, uh, she bought a, I don't know why she's saying that. She bought a, uh, what was it's, it? I'm telling you. Tablecloth that was peach buffalo. Buffalo check just starts showing up. Once you know somebody who loves buffalo check, um, you just start seeing buffalo check everywhere. <laughs> you just start seeing it. Yes, she did. She purposely bought them. And uh, what, what else? Actually. At Emily's graduation, didn't you have buffalo check on those too? Wasn't that like so. teal buffalo check? I can't remember. That was forever ago. It was like, oh. I don't think I would want to match up buffalo check napkins. No, I would not. No, it's, and it was hard for us to match up that buffalo check. It's hard to we did stencil buffalo check. I couldn't imagine matching up buffalo check. I could not imagine it. Donna said, Buffalo check is addictive. It must be. I mean, a lot, it's, a, it's, a lot of folks have it. Let's see. Let's see how good I did this. Little Treasure by Nancy said, hello, everybody. Hi, Nancy. Hello, hello, hello. Look at that. I did it. I'm just going to get better and better with each self, right? <laughs> May May said, I did match up Buffalo Check fabric and decided I don't need everything that print. I bet, I bet not. I bet not. <laughs> the hardest part of this is actually the, it's just the corners. Yeah. Well... Um, because it's, it's such a tight corner, but the f scraping it with your finger really does work. Yeah. Uh, to me, the corners, anytime there's an overlapping corner that goes two ways, it would be hard. Yeah. I mean, again, guys, it's not perfect. Lorna um, said Buffalo check mixes well with flowers. It does. It's not perfect, but I'm not even mad about it. What is it that Mary says we don't do perfect? Yeah, we don't. Uh, we don't do perfect. She said, "Yeah, we don't do perfect." We don't do perfect. Now for the drawers of that desk, I did not decoupage napkins in it. I used 
kill and stick wallpaper. Yeah. Oops. That that looks really good too. The drawers. Mm -hmm. so I was really shocked. All right. That might have been this might have been the hardest part. It was just that corner? It was these two shelves because now I just have the bottom shelf. And I think Only that's machines it. do perfect, Lorna said. That's right. I just need the bottom shelf. Okay. So you want me to move this? Yeah, we'll need to move it down. Or I need to flip the shelf over. I'm moving it. All right. Hopefully nobody got dizzy from that. Mama said, I love this ironing technique so much. Uh, me too, because it's so, Nancy, to me, it's just easier. Nancy said, I decoupaged a large glass jar for my tumbling tower blocks earlier this month. Better than just a plain jar. Yeah. Heck yeah. Misty's been decoupaging everything here lately. Everything. Um, so, can they see that, that inch down there? Yeah, can you can, see, you can see it. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so when I laid all this down, I was like, "That's it's literally an inch. That's it. Perfectly one inch. Actually, it's, it's three quarters of an inch. Yeah, like that. I need to come onto that side. I can't lean over. Okay, that's this. fine. Um, Just step I over. I need this. And I'm going to need another napkin. And yeah, Donna's scissors. right. You could just decoupage... Uh, the buffalo check on an item to set on a shelf, like a block sitter. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, where you don't have to match it up to anything. Yeah. But yeah, so easy. she pre-painted all the, the Mod Podge on this morning. There you go. After she took the kids to school. So this stuff has been dried for a while. My necklace is steadily hitting my microphone, so I'm sorry about that. You could add a scrap of thin trim molding to fill that inch. So yeah, that's, that's, what, we, that's we, what we discussed actually. We actually talked about that. Um, we talked about a couple of different solutions to it, but I said what I ended up on was, you know what? I'm just gonna um, paint it. I'm gonna paint this one except one inch section and just see how that looks when it's standing up. Because I guarantee you, you're not going to see that that one little piece because we did talked about. Do we want it to go down or do we want it to go up? But I feel like just putting it up and then painting that one inch, one inch section, I don't think you're going to notice it. Kathy honestly. said you can split the difference and put the napkins in the very middle. I thought about that too. <laughs> I thought that I if really you do did. with the top gap, that it would leave a better, because when the shelf's standing up, you'd never see you'd the never top see. gap. But I will tell you never. this, um, because I'm going to put this in the store for sale, um, I'll complete this whole project. So the bottoms of the shelves will be painted and along with the body and the back and everything. Um, so I said what I was going to do was just I was going to match it up to the top. I'm going to paint this one inch right here. And, and if it don't look right, we'll put some three-quarter round yeah, on it. Yeah, if it doesn't look right, then we'll, you know, come back to it. So that's how I left it. That's where I ended up at. Nancy said, plus you're going to add items to the shelf anyway. See, that's what I was thinking too. I was like, you know. But yeah, since it's for sale, since it'll be for sale for the store, if it doesn't look right after she paints it, then we'll pop a piece of three quarter round on it. And uh, we'll definitely make it look right because yeah. I don't want it to. So I'm going to decoupage. I'm going to do one at a time because this is a, um, this is a pretty easy section. get my parchment paper there we go yeah see may may said if you move it down the strip won't show up when it's upright there yeah kathy's right too put it on the bottom put the trim up under the shelf okay so go down yeah go down okay because one piece of trim even we could do all three shelves underneath with a piece of trim Go down. There we go. Because popping a trim on is just gluing it down because I'm not going to use uh, staples or anything. I'll just use some Loctite adhesive.
Molly said, I wish I knew about this ironing technique before. I did a bookshelf with antique sheet music and fought the bubbles hard. See, that was like, that was my thing um, when I was like, I don't want to do this. Because number one, these are napkins, so they're going to wrinkle up. I, I already know that if I'm doing it with Mod Podge or Clear Coat, either one, they're going to wrinkle up. Um, See, and I'll, that'll give me a headache. It'll honestly give me a headache. And Lorna was thinking along the same lines as me with the trim. If you put the trim on the bottom, then the books won't sit up against the back of the bookshelf. That's true. That's true. Okay, so we'll line this up. Yeah, it'll be easy to pop a piece of trim on that top piece. Because three-quarter inch around will look good. Paint it the same color, you'll never even notice it's there. Mm -hmm. Especially if I don't fire staples into it. And we just glue it on. And Loctite makes great one second or three second bond adhesives. Isn't it three seconds is what it says? I think so. I think that's what it I is. I use it all the time to fix stuff. They sell it in these little squeeze tube things or you can buy it in the caulk gun. I prefer the caulk gun size because I do use it quite a bit. I just like getting my seams ironed on. That's how we're going to attach the rest of the trim in the bathroom when we finish it out this weekend. At the store? Yes. Because you were wanting to do the booth, so I figure I'll just fin finish trimming it out. I got to drill into the concrete, put some uh, tap cons in it, and then put that, attach that safety bar on the side. And then the toilet paper roller going after that. Finally, then we can paint it. That'll be fun. That's a fun project. Not so much. It's, Not take, so it's much. taken me forever to complete it. Not so much. Because I just couldn't get the, the mud to... Where, where I butted it up against the previous drywall, it's not wanting to mud up properly. I should have just tore out all the drywall and then replaced it all the way around so I could get nice, even... But buttoning it up against uh, non-flat work has been a real pain. So I'm going to trim it with wood to hide any of the ugliness. Come on, napkin. There we go. Then there was this big 2x6 that was embedded, or not 2x6, 2x10. I think so. 2x10 so. embedded in the uh, stucco. And when we pulled it out, I had to grind off the nails that were holding it into the wall because they used that powder actuating nail gun so it fires a 22 shell basically and it pushes uh, nails in the wood so we had to grind those out so I'm putting everything back in with tap cons and the piece I'm putting up is a 2 by 12 to cover that gap in the stucco because I didn't know there was a gap in the stucco and after that, it's just hanging a paper towel roller back up and painting. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Oh, and I got a little bitty strip of drywall I have to hang up that I totally forgot. And I didn't notice it. <laughs> we forgot that piece somehow. Yeah, didn't even notice it. But it's lucky I got one whole sheet left. Always buy one extra of everything when I'm doing a project like that. So I, I'll have something. Ten extra, ten, two, I always buy ten extra two by fours. No matter what the project is. We're getting a bunch of hearts. So imagine that's the girls going, yeah, he's going to finish it out this weekend. Is that what that is? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let me get this one. And then a little bit more floor leveler and we'll be good to go. And after that, let it dry for uh, 30 days, I think it is. And then we'll epoxy the floor in the bathroom and it's going to look really, really good. All right. Not at our house. Our house is tile. We're not doing that. That's at the store. Come on and line that up. I, I, honestly, this is the hardest part to me. Well, you're doing really good. I keep on hitting my mic. I'm really sorry if that's loud. As soon as I can. Uh oh, no dummy. Let's see. Yeah, 
it just slightly moved. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal, though. Sorry for going silent for just a second. I got a notification. It just slightly moved on me. But I don't really think it's going to be that noticeable, so I'm just going to I'm just going to roll with it. And just iron it down. Sorry. That's it. So I have That's a small iron from Penny's shop. It's an Oliso. I want to, I want to give I want you to give it a try. I think it would be awesome for this technique. It's only slightly larger than that one she really? said. Really? That's May May the saying it. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh gosh. I left my And May May brought up a a point and we'll talk about it later. I think it's a great idea. Okay. Let me, um, where's my, okay. I am ready to get this thing set up so I can get off my knees like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at this point, I'm like, we're about to distress it. It needs to be distressed. My mate says she'll bring it to you. Okay. So all you gotta do is, Minute, you're just, trimming it? Um, I just, just have corner, to trim right? this corner. Okay. Um, Mimi's leaving, right? Think for so. I think she said that they were this weekend. <laughs> Margie said, I bet your back hurts. It's not not so much my back. But I'll tell you. She's what, leaving on Sunday. Sunday, that's right. That's right. And Sunday we're taking Kaylee. Sunday I'm taking Kaylee to a friend's baptism. Her friend is getting baptized. And Kaylee wants to go, go see her, and be um, go to her, go to it. So Sunday morning, I was going to take her to her friend's church. Well, I, it's just going to have to be in the way because I'm working at a weird angle. It's, just, it's such a weird angle. No, you didn't. Sunday is my sixth wedding anniversary, uh, Nancy said. Oh. Congratulations. Congratulations. Happy anniversary. Yep, I'm done with this. This might be the first and last bookshelf. <laughs> no, you got one more that you're going to have to do. Okay. It just tore. It's just going to have to be okay. Where did it tear at? Right there. It's just going to have to be okay. No, just layer a piece over it. It's just going to have to be okay. Let's um, rearrange this real quick okay. so that I can <laughs> fit Moving it cameras. Main, I'm switching the main camera. And let me get these papers because I can still use these papers right here. So I want to save them. You want me to set it up? I can. It's not above my weight limit. Oh my god. Let me scoot it back some. There we go. Wow. That is awesome. Now for the fun part. Now the, the fun painting. part. The funnest part. I wanna let me step back. May May said, so now it brings up a question. How hard is it to take the up a piece and start over? Oh, so, like take that off? Yeah. Oh, sanding it. Would that, I mean, sanding. would you have to? Um, would you be able to wet it and then get it off maybe? There's a good possibility you can because it's a modular. We never thought about it. Water base. 
But honestly, say say you did this and then you decided, you know, that this isn't. All the dogs have come to see me. Come on, pup. <laughs> Go let her. Um, I think, honestly, um, um, if you just were trying to redo this or whatever, I think you could sand it off. Not, no problem whatsoever. I know you can sand it off, no problem. Yeah. Okay, so here's the color that I'm going with. And this is silk um, sandcastle. And I painted the desk in silk, if you can remember. So, like I said, it's different than chalk paint. You don't use water. Um, you don't uh, wet your surface or anything like that. But I always, always, always start out with a um, damp <laughs> paintbrush so that way it doesn't just grab all my paint. Um, so it's just, I just put it under the sink, washed it, and then I took a towel and um, dried it as best that I could. And so it's, so it's, ugh, so it's just damp. Um, silk is an all-in-one paint. It's got your primer and your uh, top coat built into it. So you will be done once this is done. San Sandy said, hi, pups. Karen said, hey, pups. Yes, Lorna said, adorgeous. Yeah. Donna said, exciting. Look at that tail go. So cute, Margie <laughs> said. As a lily is Kayla. Donna dog. said, they think you're going to use the heat gun. Is that, I was wondering, or they thought I was done with the live because they've been so good sitting here patiently. Like, Cammie is just sitting here. Lily is, a, our, the little one is a chihuahua. It's a chihuahua. Lily. That's um, that's Kaylee's dog. Kaylee's that's, pup. That's her baby. So, um. <laughs> May May said, yeah, Lorna, a gorgeous. And then, uh. Kathy said, agree, adore, just. The other reason why I went with a neutral paint color is because um, it's uh, it won't take away from the florals. That, that was my purpose behind going with a neutral color. So what I'm going to do... Because and it's very it. neutral. It's, it's barely uh, it's barely different than the white, honestly. Yeah. What I'm going to do, because I um, decoupaged first, is I'm kind of using my scraper here. Up against the edge. Up against the edge. And I'm just going to outline. Sandy said, oh, that does. It matches perfectly. It does look really good with it. And I'm just gonna go. The good thing about chalk paint, it washes right off of your uh, scraper. Yeah. And I'm just gonna outline this. <laughs> Lorna says she's waiting for the t-shirt. Adorgeous. <laughs> What's wrong, pup? Come here. You look like you've been scolded. Come here. What's going on? Why do you act like that? She's acting like she's been in trouble. She's probably ready for us to be done, honestly. Will you have to do two coats, Tina asked? Um, more than likely more than likely I will. Um You just do that with silk anyway. Honestly, um I'll say this. So many people will say that um it's a one coat paint job. It's really very rare that it ever is a one coat paint job. I think it depends on the look that you're going for. It's okay. Um, now, the darker the color, the more likely you can get by with maybe a one coat paint job. But I, you know, if you're going. We tried to get away full, with it on that dresser and it didn't work. It had yeah. to be two, two coats. If you're going for a full coverage, um, then yeah, you're probably going to need two paints. But like, you know, and silk is um, roughly about an uh, hour to two hours, sometimes four, depending on where you're at, where you live at, and what your weather's like. <laughs> um, Dry time. My mate's right. I think that's just a Missy rule. She loves that second coat. I, I love a second coat. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Because she'll sand the first coat to get a better finish. Um, second coat is my favorite simply because you get to see, you know, like the full effect. 
And I'm in an awkward position again. This is where my back would start cramping up. I will say this. I'm one of those that has to flip everything up and put it on saw horses before I'll work on it. Yeah, I will say this. That if it, yeah, if it was on a on my counter on a saw horse, it would definitely be easier. Which I said when we go to Lowe's, we're going to get a second set so we can do this stuff in the house. Yes. Because the ones outside are just dirty. Dirty, dirty, dirty. What I'm going to do for, is, I use them for everything. It's just give you a gist of how the shelf will look when it's done. Um, Nancy said, I couldn't even get in that position. Mamey said, I know me. I will do a one coat project and be happy with it. Yeah, I bet. Oh, make sure. Molly said, have to run. Thank you for showing this project. Someone is going to snap it right up. Thank you. Thank you for hanging out and watching us. For sure, for sure. Be safe, as always. Yeah. Oh, I'm not even on screen. Oh. I don't know how I do that. I'm not even click anything. It's like I'm hitting some kind of hot key on accident. I need to change my hot keys out. That's what I was telling uh, Tommy yesterday is that when I use... Streamlabs is what we use, and when we when I I set up hotkeys so I can change in between scenes, so I don't always have to use the mouse button. I like it. It's looking good so far. I, oh, I touched my pants. And they're brand new. I like those are cargos. No, thank goodness. I like this color with this napkin. I really like this. Um, a uh, cottage vintage vibe that is given. Yeah, For I like sure. it too. I'm glad when you asked me if we had any colors that would match that background and seal. I was like, I think Sandcastle. But we weren't sure, so she went to the store and sure enough, it was Sandcastle. Yeah, Sandcastle looks really good with it. So to finish, like... The once I put my second coat of paint on there, you know, it's it's done. Like it I don't have to come back through and wax or anything like that. I don't have to do a clear coat or anything like that. But like I said, it'll um, dry with a nice flat finish. Yeah. I will um take my clear coat and just go over the edges of um my napkins because where I um, tore the edges off of it to get it, you know, I can't think and paint at the same time. I can't talk and paint at the same time. Um, where you tore your edges. Where I tore my edges, I want to make sure that that is all the way sealed because, like, my iron goes up against the edges, but it's not going to go completely flush in that corner. Right. Um, so I think I definitely am going to take a clear coat and flat, and I'm just going to go and box it in. I will say this. If you go through and put a clear coat of flat all over that, you're going to reactivate the Mod Podge that's underneath it because everything is water-based. So for this project, I don't think it's absolutely necessary to go through and add a clear coat fully to the back of these to this backboard of the napkins and stuff like that i think it's fine just like it is um my biggest concern is the edges because i want to make sure that they don't start peeling up that that's my only biggest concern and i'm trying to get the least amount of wrinkles as possible and the best way to do that is to not put another water-based product on top of it. That's just me. Somebody might say differently, but that's how I'm, I'm going with it. Well, that's what our experience with. with it, too. Yeah. But I'm noticing that you're getting such good coverage with the paint. We might not need a second coat, honestly. It you're, might just be a touch-up. You're applying a, a pretty decent amount, a nice load. Well, it's covering really good. Yeah. Um, and it could be because it's this color going over it's white. It's going over white. Is one of the reasons why. Very well could be. Margie said it's the perfect color. Nancy says she loves it. Uh, Karen said it's beautiful. Nancy said, too bad I'm in Florida. This shelf would look perfect in my room. 
Donna said her oldest granddaughter loves boho colors. This reminds me of those. Oh, it Love does. It. Oh, that was, yeah. Now that you say that, I hear, I see it. Um, yeah, it's got really good coverage. It's not. And it's probably because we are going over white. Since with, it's light yeah. going on top of light, you can usually get away with one coat, honestly. Mm -hmm. But as a general rule, I'll go through with two coats just to make sure it's all the way done and all the way sealed up and everything like that. And because I'll flip this shelf over and paint the bottom sides of these because I want it to look all the way done. And of course, I'll paint the back of the shelf so that way it looks good too. And my biggest reason for painting the back of the furniture is simply because um, it sits out in the middle of the store. It sits out like for display purposes for my, um, what I do. I need it to be, I like it when it looks good all the way around, just in case I do put it in the middle of my booth and not up against the wall. Lisa said, I'd love to put my vintage glassware on it. Oh, yes. Just imagine how cool those tumblers would look if it was sitting up. Or these, uh, all this stuff that's cramped in this shelf, all the Fenton and uranium glass. I bet the Fenton cranberry pieces would look really good on there. Meme said, for some reason, it reminds me of furniture from my childhood, early 80s. It feels very nostalgic to me. Ooh. That's what it reminded me of was uh, vintage wallpaper. I was just a baby in the 80s, so I don't know. We were young in the 80s. We weren't just I was babies. just a baby in the 80s. I remember my grandma having flower wallpaper. Yeah. Kathy said the daisy set from the other day. Yes. yes. That would look good on that. I did That's take a that, good call. I did take that to the store. <laughs> You're selling it after all. Oh, huh? yeah. I'm going to sell it. I'm not going to keep it. The way it. you was acting, we thought he was going to keep it. Yeah, I'm not going to keep it. I did keep the candles. And there is another set of loose sack candles in the store. Um, I went and looked at them. They are shorter than mine. I can't remember the measurements of it, but they're shorter than mine, and they um, are $30. So. And she was proud of them. Uh, I got a seal of a deal on mine. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I could that's really... where That's where having your uh, yeah. Palm Pro comes in at. Yeah, it would. Oops, I can't even see. I didn't move the camera, sorry. Sorry about that, guys. No, I wasn't calling May May Vintage, I promise. I'll call her Vintage. No. <laughs> May May said, I'm probably more rustic. I creak when I walk. I creak when I stand up. I'll be creaking after today because I think out of all the projects I've done in this kitchen, this one would be the most brutal. The most brutal. Lisa said, Fenton is her absolute favorite. I wish that I could pull that cranberry piece out. We're pr you that better not get in that cabinet, Lord knows. It's beautiful. It is. Maybe I should turn my phone on and do like last nope. time and go around the house. Nope, we're good. We're good. She didn't like that one. What, was it last Tuesday that I did that or was it I, Friday? I don't remember when you did it. I think it was last Friday. Oh, I didn't notice those holes in it. Sometimes you don't notice it until after you That's paint. like a quarter inch dowel yeah. needs to go in there. Yeah. We can always fill them and then come back through and touch it up. Or leave it be. Yeah, or leave it be. Let me see if I can. <laughs> Tina said, I got you all beat. I'm very vintage. <laughs> I'll get my small paintbrush. Mainly I just wanted to show them the full. Oh, I can stand up. I'm telling you. Get my big head out the way. There we go. <laughs> she has it blocked out. Sandy said, lol, Missy. <laughs> Donna said, I'm ancient. No, no, no. You're only as ancient as you, as you feel, I think, or act. Right. Some days, um, more than others. 
I mean, my grandma used to walk uh, circles in the yard so much that she made a about a two-inch path in the dirt from walking in her own yard every day. Um, dark wax would look good on this in the corners and around the bottoms and stuff like that. That would definitely give it um, more of a um, antique vibe of this bookshelf or whatever. Um, and it would also uh, draw attention to your um, details like right through there and then down there on the bottom of that line. It would also do that if you liked that look. Um, if I would have painted this in chalk paint, I could have distressed it a little bit. It's which, honestly, I mean, I can distress silk. It's a little uh, bit more just, work. Yeah, it'll just take more work. Um, a little bit more elbow grease in the sand. and But a little bit of distressing wouldn't look so bad. Well, you got some distressing on it right now, on that inside on that piece. What are you talking about? Right here. There you go. Yeah, well, it's you're, just you're when I'm painting it. it. I know. Yeah. But if you left it be, it would have been some distressing. Yeah. Um, so she's, she's standing. I was hurting her watching Missy on her knees, Nancy said. Yeah, I'm standing. I got to. Lorna said oh. I was having my kids in the 80s. That's when I was born in the 80s. That was when I was 82. Born. Yeah. That thing's looking good. I'm standing back. Oh my gosh, doesn't it just look vintage? Oh, let me switch to, sorry, main cam. I mean, I'm stepping back. I'm just kind of trying to look at it's it. It's looking good so far. You missed the inside on the middle. Yeah, floor. I need a different um, brush <laughs> to get in those corners. I need to be at a different angle and then I end up blocking the whole camera. So I'm just, um, but it looks really good. Yeah. Or I'm, I like I'm, it. I'm, I, I like think it, it looks too. good. It's looking great. I really love those napkins. Really, it's really, looking really love great. It. Yeah, napkins. Margie said it's beautiful. So, Hannah said her oldest son was born in eighty two. Her youngest in nine in eighty eight. Karen said she graduated in the eighties. I was born in the eighties. Boom. All right. I think this is. Um, I think I'm gonna. Ooh, let this be. Karen said you could ask May May for some. Uh, cookie dough ink to shade it up some. I yeah, I definitely think that you could um, just do a little bit of dist um, distressing, a little bit of dark wax or something like that, like the distress stuff, ink or whatever, without having to distress it. Just putting that um, dark, use dark wax, dark way, glaze, whichever. Um, especially like right here in this line around the edges of everything and then up here. I wouldn't too much worry about the shelves or anything like that. Um, my necklace. Um, but I definitely think you could if you wanted to go with that. Just a little bit of shadowing um, and aging to the bookshelf. I think it looks good. But I think this is where I'm going to stop at. But it's most definitely going to need two coats. I'm seeing that now on yeah. the bottom shelf. Yeah. Most of everything needs two coats. I think that's where I'm going to stop at. I don't think I can do no more. Okay. My knees are about... Dead. Well, you, you could accomplish what you this wanted to, which lot. was doing the walk yeah, the yeah. napkins. I say my biggest tips on if you if you would try to attempt this project or something similar to like this, um, definitely go on with the iron on method. Um, it is the easiest, and it gives you like there's no wrinkles, no wrinkles. Um, so I'm really really happy about that. Um, and the water and the what's this called a scraper. Yes. So does it, yeah, a water and a scraper work wonders as far as getting those clean edges, but just beware. I mean, it's napkins, so they can tear easy. Like, I can sit here and spot it, um, but I think that once I get everything painted up and, and finished up, I don't think you're going to be able to tell at all. And I think, like, right here, you can't even see. Even me sitting on the floor, I can't see that yeah, one you can't inch see up the top there. Gap. Yeah, I um, knew you wouldn't. There's a good possibility I might be able to just take paint and paint that one inch and um, not even stress about doing anything to it. But well, other than that, I mean, I don't know. That Kathy said you did a great job on lining up the napkins. Well, thank you. Thank you. That I think that would, lining up the napkins perfectly, 
and um, getting the edges to tear as smoothly as possible. That, that would be the most time consuming thing. So if you do get brave enough to attempt this project, time and patience. Don't try to rush and do it in a live show from, what time do we start? 11, 11. it's 1230. <laughs> Don't try to do it all in a live show, but um, it's definitely doable, definitely. So when we do the next video on doing napkins, on a on a shelf like this, we'll uh, we'll most definitely take our time, and uh, we'll have better camera angles because we'll be able to control the footage, so that'll go a lot better. Yeah. Donna what? says she appreciate us doing this. May May said great job. Uh, Nan, uh, Tina gave you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten gold stars. Dad. Uh, I'm Nancy going gave to the you, bank with that Nancy one. Nancy gave you three hearts. Oh, hearts. 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 Marge just said, great job as always. Looks great, Donna said. She appreciates us doing this. I appreciate y'all watching. Karen said, it's great. Thank you for another great video, Marge I, said. I appreciate y'all hanging out and watching us and always coming back. Y'all are awesome. And Guys, y'all have a great weekend. Uh, be safe and God bless you and... We'll be back Tuesday. Watch out for any kind of weather, as always. Weather's always my biggest thing. I'm scared of the weather. Yeah. We'll be back Tuesday. We'll see you then. Bye, y'all. Bye.